Hi everyone, I'm Chef Dennis and we're here around my kitchen table and it's a great day in Florida. The sun is shining, the skies are blue, it's about 80 degrees and life is good. Uh, I'm, and I'm ready today to cook something special for you. And we're going to say hi to my co-host, Susan Sarah. How are you doing, Susan? Hi, I am doing great, Chef. It's also sunny here. I, it's, you know, I don't know, maybe it's 35. So I'm okay with that for now. But um, the ice has melted. The snow has mostly melted. So I'll take it. I will take it. It's, it's good. Yeah. I was reading some tweets yesterday from Boston and on Facebook. And... I don't know what was going on, but they're going, you know, what the hell is it going doing outside? It's snowing, it's sleeting, it's raining. You know, yeah. some guy said the frogs are coming next. You know, it's like they must have had a little turn in the weather there. I know. They must have. They must have. And, you know, um, I think we're getting some rain and maybe a little snow in the next couple of days. But <sighs> whatever, you know, I mean, it's still a good excuse to make these comfort foods. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, still be cozy inside, at least for us, you know, mid-Atlantic and Northeasterners and wherever. So uh, so I'm enjoying that. In fact, on the weekend, um, we have a, a, a store, and it's called Mr. Sausage, and it's an Italian store where they make their own pastas, and they have wonderful, um, like, butcher-type meats, and they have, like, a million different... Um, appetizer type things you know and I always forget about that store so we went there and we got some of the homemade ravioli and uh, clam sauce so I had clam sauce and you know what it's just it sometimes it's nice to go to these places and get these wonderful ready-made things oh absolutely I mean there's nothing wrong and you know and, and that beats the heck out of going to a restaurant or going to a fast food place you know even some of these you know, there's still fast food with these upscale places, and I don't want to be throwing names out there, but, you know, there's so many of them out there that are chain restaurants. And really, if you can find a place like that and go buy some ready-made foods that all you have to do is heat up, you're really going to be a lot better off. Cause yeah, and the guy is behind the counter making the ravioli, and sometimes these little shops are, they're, they're, you know, a lot of character. Yeah. Yeah, and you know you're getting you're getting something that you can depend upon. You don't doesn't know which line cook didn't show up for work last night, and which dishwasher is cooking on the line. And believe me, those things happen. Oh uh, yeah, do you have any of those like these little market type places that are that you like to go to? Any by you? Well, you know, being me and what I do, when, when I go out, you know, if I'm going to buy something out, I'll generally, like, I, I would love some fresh pasta, but, you know, being gluten-free now is throwing a bug uh -huh. into everything. So uh, before, you know, I would look for somebody that was making some, like, fresh raviolis or cannellini or, or tortellini or, or tortelloni, something, you know, something that I would not make at home. Something that I really don't want yes. to time to do, which that is not sense. can't do it. But yeah, you know, why reinvent the wheel? It's not food is not supposed to be that difficult, and it should be easy to get to, easy to eat, and something you enjoy doing. Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering. You know, uh, you do cook all the time, but even for you, there must be times when you know you you just want to take out. Oh yeah, you know, times like that, then we'll either get some Chinese or. You know, a pizza before I was gluten free was always nice to do, and you know, cheese steaks. You know, now now being in Florida, you really have to look for things like that. I try to get simpler foods when I do take out. Uh, I have not found those types of places, although I know they are that do like an, a little higher end uh, takeout food. You know, even like uh, something like Wegmans used to have, you know, in there where you could pack up some stuff if you just didn't feel like cooking. Yeah, well, we will sometimes, you know, we'll often take out from restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's actually very common rather than go out for the restaurant. But it's really funny. I have to just say, tell you this because over the weekend, my husband, like for days, he was craving like the down and dirty um, Chinese food. The General Tso's chicken, the pork fried rice. I don't think we've had that in over s several years, and he was just craving it. So he got all the stuff and the spare ribs, and you know we got all that stuff. He said, "Well, now I know why I haven't done it. It was, you know, greasy and everything, and it was that same taste. But you know, some things know. are best to leave." 
<laughs> we, we forget, and I'm the same way. I'm going when we do get the urge. Like Lisa, will eat Chinese more, and generally, it's she'll get fried rice and an egg roll and a soup, and that's it. Uh, but I I love some of those dishes, and you know I think I, I may start doing some of those. Like one of my favorites was a ho fun or a low fun, but it's those wide rice noodles, and I can have them. So you know maybe that's something. Oh, I can good. Have. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not Chinese, and I've never been trained Chinese cooking, but I used to cook you know like Chinese style dishes in the restaurant, you know, and people seem to like them. So you know maybe we'll do that a couple of shows. Do yeah, little. maybe you have an, maybe you have an Asian market nearby that you don't know yeah. about. Yeah, and get some. Well, you know, I can see them. I have seen. There's a lot of different ethnic places around here, so I just have to start going into them more. But yeah, I could I could get some nice noodles and do a stir fry with the noodles. That would be fun. Even fried rice is not hard. So. Yeah, true. So today, tell us about today. Okay, today we're going back. I was a saute chef. You know, that was what I did. That was who I was. That was when I went into a restaurant. I didn't want to work the grills, you know, the charboilers or any other stations. But you put me in front of a, a range, you know, with six burners, eight burners, and give me my pans and my meat and cloths, and I was a happy camper. And I could cook, you know, three, four hundred dinners a night, one at a time. Wow. And Sauté is, and it's because sauté is not difficult. Sauté is, you know, and basically when we're doing that in a restaurant, that's how they're going to make a good portion of your meals. Although a lot of things now go towards grilled or go towards baked. Uh, but it's a really quick way to make dinner when you're pressed for time, you're pressed for ideas, you, you just don't know what you're going to have. It's a good time, I would say, open the refrigerator and see what you have. and Let's see what we can make. I mean, that was always one of my things when I would teach my students was let's go walk, go into the walk-in and see what we have to, that we can use for a dish. Because as long as you have a protein, you know, you can build anything around that protein. Or even vegetables, a nice variety of vegetables. So if you've got chicken in the house, if you've got beef in the house, if you've got pork, seafood, you know, you can pretty much saute a dish around that. And then but now, now let me ask you this. When you say saute, uh, does that presume that there will be a sauce accompanied with it. Yes, there'll be everything's going to be done in the pan and that's what makes it fast and easy too. Is that everything you're doing is going to be finished in the pan and it can either be served plainly if you tighten the sauce up or you know you can leave it a little looser and you can serve it over pasta, you can serve it over rice, you can serve it over uh, any of the grains that you like that you might quinoa uh, you know anything that you enjoy eating, lentils. Uh, you can then serve it alongside, over it, or you know, or with it, or however you want to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of these: is that you're going to start and finish right in one pan. And generally, I can make two servings in a good size sauté pan. This isn't a real big one. And you know what? Uh, that that always brings to mind. I I'm a recent, um, well, in the past few years anyway. I have many decades of cooking behind me. But only in the past five years did I begin to collect some uh, Le Creuset. Uh, Le Creuset. And then that's the beauty of it is you saute it and you bring it to the table and it's just beautiful. Add a few garnishes and then it's it looks like a company dinner. Yeah. And you know, and these pans can go in the oven. You know, oh. like a lot of times, you know, if I'm if I'm using a good stainless steel pan. Right, and I'm going to cook on stovetop. Let's say I finish my dish. Now I want to keep it warm. All right. You know, the only thing you have to worry about that is if the oil starts to break. If it starts to get a little greasy from getting too hot. So if you're just keeping it warm, you, know, you want to keep the oven around 300 to 75. Or if you want to melt some cheese, like a lot of times, say I'm, I'm making something really nice in the pan, and I want to hit it with a little gouda or a little. Uh, Swiss or, or just some other kind, of, even mozzarella, some other kind of cheese just to liven up the meal just a little bit more. Well, I'll just top it off in the pan and I'll take the pan and put it in the oven. The only thing you want to remember is to always have a towel nearby to grab it out of the oven and to remember because I've forgotten on enough occasions that I had it in the oven and then I go to move it. And Right, right. I mean, I do, I do that technique when I'm searing um, s steaks or when I'm searing salmon. Then I often finish it in the oven, but I haven't done that for anything else. So maybe, you know, there's... it depends what you're doing. Like I used to do uh, some scallopinis where I'd have a lot of vegetables in there with it, and that might be something good to do next time. 
uh, very colorful. And you just pop it in the oven. Basically, you're just melting the cheese. You know, if we had a salamander in a restaurant, uh, which is a broiler, that's yes, over top, yes, stick it in there, boom, and pull it out. So we don't have that here. So either I got to get a torch out, which some people use, and just melt it with a little mini torch, or stick it in the oven. Okay, but let me let me let me get back to one thing you said, which stuck with me. You said it shouldn't be on too high a heat, or else the oil will break. What yeah. All right. See, we're gonna we're gonna cook in fat. We're gonna cook in I mean olive oil, butter, or whatever. So what happens is as your sauce starts to thicken at the finish of the of the sauté, which is really what you're planning on doing, because I'm gonna generally serve it just as is. So you might have to make an adjustment on the sauce so it's not too thick. Because when it goes into high heat, then that's when the grease, the fat part of it's going to start to separate out of the dish with high heat. So if you're holding in an oven, it's sometimes better that it's a brothier kind of uh -huh. sauce than a butter type of sauce because then you have less chance of it breaking. Which, you know, what reminds me of the appliances, um, the uh, a warming drawer. A yep. warming drawer then essentially will protect, sort of protect the food. Yes. If you've got a warming drawer, that might be a perfect thing just to drop it in. But again, like for the most part, you know, we would hold dishes in the oven if they were brothy dishes. If it was a okay. soft dish, it would wait on the side until you were ready to pick it up. Then it would go back on the fire and heat it up and finish it. Throw the butter in then, any other seasonings I need then, and finish it. And then if it was still a little too thick, then I could hit it with a little uh, stock or anything like that. Great. That's great clarification. Thank you. Okay. So what do we do? Well, right now uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to heat up the pan. And I just said stock, and I remember I didn't make any stock. So I'm going to do that when you do your presentation. Uh, but for now, the art of saute all begins with a saute pan and you want to get a skillet a little warm. So while that's heating up, I'm going to come over here. Well, first I'm going to show you, we talked about doing chicken. Now this is a really, a, not, a, not a humongous chicken breast, but it's a good sized chicken breast. So it needs to be cut down. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the chicken with a sharp knife, and I'm going to hold my hand on top of it, and I'm going to just cut it as best as I can down the center and butterfly. Okay, now I'm going to open it up and then just cut it. So now I've taken this really thick chicken breast, which would take forever to cook, and I've made it into two pieces. If I see anything that needs to be cut off here now, I'll trim it. Any little pieces of gristle, you know, fat's okay because that'll cook down. But if you've got any kind of tendons or any cartilage or anything, you want that out of there. So this is perfect for a sauté dish. You don't need to flatten these. This is not too thick. Uh, it'll cook up very nicely. Uh, and also, what, what works really well in sauté dishes are chicken tenders. So you know, don't ever be afraid to use those. And of course, you can use thighs if you want to use thighs. Like generally, I would prefer thighs, but now because they have more flavor. But uh, most people will use breasts because they're less fatty. So here I have flour that I've seasoned with sea salt and pepper. I'm just going to mix it up a little while my pan is heating up. I always dredge meat in flour. Okay, not seafood, but meat. So if I'm cooking chicken or beef or pork, it's going to go in flour because this is going to help protect the meat and it's also going to help build my sauce. Sounds like a good way to, um, you know, to, to both brown it, to protect the meat a little bit, to uh, to add a little uh, substance. Well, it's going to add a little flavor to it, too, with the seasonings. Like I always say, this is your one opportunity to really season the meat while you're cooking it. And let me grab some tongs, too. I actually had to run out and buy a ceiling fan this morning, so I wasn't quite as prepared as I would have liked. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I was running this morning, too. <laughs> Luckily, this is saute is that simple, and it really doesn't take a lot of preparation. What I cut for this was mushrooms. I got some artichokes, some hearts. Ooh, and I nice, them. nice yeah. combination. And this is because Lisa loves artichokes. When we first started going out, it was at the restaurant I worked at, and uh, we used artichokes in a lot of dishes, so she got used to eating them. Really enjoyed them. 
So I mean, this is not a lot of things you have to prepare. That being said, you can add all kinds of things to this dish. Okay, so let me turn this over. So I browned one side, and whenever I brown something, that's when I put mushrooms in, or, or if there's something else that needs to cook a while, that's when I add them. She likes mushrooms, so I'm going to use a lot of them. And you get some nice, you get that nice moisture from the mushrooms too. Now I also have some shallots here, and this is not something you have to use, but I, I wanted to add a little bit more, and I need a little more oil because these mushrooms are going to take it up. I didn't put the shallots in right away because I didn't want them to burn. So now I'm just, let's see how I just rotate the pan around. I love shallots, love shallots. I always forget to, to buy them, but I really, I have some now on my kitchen counter. I like them. It, it's a nice, it's nice to use instead of just using garlic or onion all the time. It, it makes a really nice flavor into your dish. And then once you start to get adventurous, what you want to do, if you can flip, is you pull everything down to the bottom, and then you just... Oh, I have always wanted to do that, to so know how to do it. Well, the and whole trick is in the, the, trick? the wrist, and you slide everything to the front of the pan, and then okay. you pull. Oh, you pull. You push, and then you pull. You pull back, yeah. Ah, okay. You, move it. you get it here, and then pull. And there's not a lot of liquid in here, so it's not flipping quite as easily, but it's doing pretty good. All right, so see, this is pretty much where I would want it to be ready to sauce it. So I'm going to turn this down. And here, if I had wine, this is where I want to add wine to deglaze it. All right, I don't have any wine, but I have some artichoke juice. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to deglaze with a little artichoke juice. Wait, so what about chicken broth? Perfect, I'm going right? to use chicken broth while you're talking right now because I didn't have it. But you could deglaze with, uh, that's why I chose the artichoke uh, juice, because that's what I had, and I wanted to deglaze the pan. But what deglazing the pan does, why I would use wine or a liquid, is all the little bits that stuck to the pan while it was sautéing, all the little flour, all the little bits of flavor are stuck to the pan. So by deglazing it, you're kind of stopping the cooking a little bit, and you're pulling all those little bits of flavor into back into the pan where you're going to use them in your sauce. So that's that's the magic of saute. So if you want to go ahead, I'm going to get some stock real quick and we'll finish the dish and then I'll I just... Sure, okay, I sure will. Well. So you take off and I will uh, take it from here. So last week I promised you more uh, cool storage solutions for the kitchen. I was just on a storage kick and so I want to show you some that I took from uh, Germany some a little while ago and let me go to screen share and here we go and this should be doing it yes here we go okay so yeah this doesn't show you much right here but I will okay so this is interesting this is a countertop that goes over the cooktop to it'll double the space of your countertop so you don't always we're not a lot of time we're prepping we don't always use the cooktop right away so this is a sort of um, interesting uh, solution to adding more counter space <clears throat> and you'll see the young I took a shot underneath it's the uh, you know it's not as thick as it looks so it's just goes right over the cooktop and uh, there you have a doubled double prep space which is cool um, and here we have uh, two-tiered shel shelving and uh, segmented uh, storage spaces and we have even some uh, little areas for spices there and uh, you know one of the hottest trends in storage for kitchen cabinets has been these segmented solutions and of course we've had knives uh, slots for knives for many years but uh, you know, it seems to be getting more and more personalized. And I'll tell you, I said last week, the rack on the backsplash, so useful for so many different things. And this is under a sink. Now, under the sink, you can you can use a drawer. It's a pull-out drawer under the sink. Usually, we're bending to the floor yep. under our sink. 
And how about a neon lit green pantry with, you know, a sexy glass and metal shelving. So, you know, there's some beautiful, beautiful high end. Uh, I mean, if you want to put the money into your pantry, you know, and lighting and the whole bit, you know, why not? Um, a lot of this comes from uh, Hayfula or Clever Storage, actually. This is from Clever Storage, which is a wonderful brand. I, I actually, my daughter owns some Clever Storage pieces, and they're so well made. Uh, so I would definitely look, look up Clever Storage. This is an area that holds dishes, so you can move them around for glasses, dishes, and so on and so forth. Another type of segmented, lots of innovative, clean, easy to clean. Uh, this is for more high end if you want wood inserts. Again, you can find this in Clever Storage. You can find this in Hayfula. Uh, many high end, so it, many high end kitchen cabinet companies will have this, but you can get it on your own. You can get IKEA cabinets and go to Hayfula and uh, order it online. How about a meat slicer? How about a, a, a scale? So, you know, some of these German companies have amazing inserts in their, um, in their cabinetry. And this is actually a great way, you see those rods that, uh, that are put on the uh, wood there, a great way to store cookware and, you know, still have a wood countertop. So see, here we're looking at, look at the, um, trash under the sink, very useful, uh, all in one spot. And the spices, there are so many ways for spices to be added. Here's a scale. How about this, Chef? Here's a oh, kitchen cool. scale. Oh, my God. I Whoa. know. Yep, you pull it out, and there it is, and it, it looks like it pops right out, too. So, I, never, you know, I drag mine out, and i got to put it away, and you know, I, I'd like to have it out there a little more often. Yeah, yeah. There, there is. I can look for some other brands too that do these really wonderful, um, uh, you know, drawer accessories. And it's, it's. Let me tell you. Once you get into the world of kitchen drawer accessories, let me tell you, you can be obsessed. <laughs> I know you wouldn't think so, but you really can, right? Oh, it's nice to organize everything. It really does a lot for your kitchen. I mean, if you work a kitchen, if it's if it's not just a pretty kitchen, and you work in that kitchen, having things where they belong is a wonderful thing. Yeah. I know. I mean, look at mugs. Look at all these mugs and all these glasses and uh, so and pots. You know, forget looking under five pots for the one you want. You know, the best way to store is don't store more than two pots, one on top of another. You know, really, you know, if your kitchen is planned right, you shouldn't have to dig so much. So lots of ideas I came back with, um, you know, from Germany, and, and it's really... Now here is vegetables. You know, I'm not sure. You know, you may want to put some kind of liner underneath, um, or make sure you use them quickly. Uh, you know, because it's always tricky with um, you know putting live fruit and vegetables in. But uh, you know, but there it is. And oh, this I wanted to show you the wraps. So you have these uh, stainless steel sections, and then they have the teeth on them, so you just rip off what you need. Huh. So lots of good stuff here. And then you have some, some of these where you have holes for different types of canisters. So you put your things out of the box and into a very organized section wow. like this for all sorts of things. So that's my... Um, that's it. Here we go. I mean, is it pretty too? Very pretty. It looks great. You know, obviously you want to use it before things go bad or line it, but uh, there you go. Well, you know, Europeans are a lot more used to not refrigerating things than we are, uh, and they tend to use things as they buy them, whereas Americans, we buy them, put them in the refrigerator, and forget about them sometimes. Yeah. So, and that's only part way through. So, I'll have to do even more of this another time. So, here we go. All right. Well, I have made my stock, and I poured a little stock in here. So, I'm going to turn this back on. And this chicken, this is where I would have stopped if I was in the restaurant. Chicken's not quite done, but it's almost done. 
I would have stopped there, put it aside, and then finished it when the waitress came in and said, you know, table 14 is ready to pick up. So they call for it. So then, then it would be ready to go. Now I'm just going to season this with just a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of black pepper, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze a little lemon juice in it. Oh, okay. Like the lemon juice. A picante. And that's what a, a picante or a piccata mm -hmm. is, is, is a lemon juice. Now, at this point, I said you can make it your own. Some people will put capers in here. Capers are very nice in this dish. You read my mind. I was just going to say capers. Now, if I use capers, I probably wouldn't use artichokes. I would keep it plain. I might not even use mushrooms if I was taking it the capers direction. I might just use shallots and capers, keep it very simple, throw it pretty, and, and finish it that way. But since, like I said, this is how I, I was trained to make it the first time, and this is how Lisa enjoys it, I'm going to add some artichoke hearts in here. And I slice them. I bought, and it's important, don't buy the ones in oil that are already have flavor to them because they just detract from it. Oh, I wouldn't have known that. Interesting. Well, they're great for salads, the oiled ones. But, you know, if you want to put them in a, in a dish, you know, so you get the ones in the juice because the juice is an important part of this. And you saw I did pour it in earlier. But this is the point where I would have added a little bit of artichoke juice to it. Because the artichoke juice softens the flavor just a little bit. It's, it's amazing what it can do for a dish. Wow. So this is pretty much done. All right, dinner's ready. Do we have our sides ready? So the only last thing I need to do is I need to take a hunk of butter, roll it in some flour, and I'm going to make a beurre manier, and that's what this is, butter and flour mixed together. And then I'm going to finish my sauce. And you can do it with just plain butter. And this is gluten-free flour, too. So I'm going to stir it around. So even though you already have flour from the beginning, you you need a little more to just kind of well, tighten more. it up? Okay, yeah, because this is this is a heavier sauce. See, I've got more of volume, not heavier, more volume of sauce here. And I, you can't really see how nicely it's thickening up, but it's done. Okay, it's thick, it's done. I'm going to plate it and I'll show you. Now, what I'm going to do, so now to plate it, now normally, like if this was a single dish, I'd have my plate set and I would sometimes just pour it directly on the plate because I would have made just enough. I'm a little out of practice. So. Oh my gosh, I want that. I want to eat that right now. Okay, so here's two pieces wow. of chicken. Now we're going to take some of the artichokes and the mushrooms. And I'm going to pour just a little bit of this sauce over. So again, this is enough for two. You can, and if you need more sauce, you put a little more sauce in. You put a little more mushroom in, whatever you want. And now I'm going to garnish it with a little of the lemon zest that I used. And I have a little parsley because we need to get a little splash of color in here. It's a little too much. A little splash of color in there just to brighten it up. Now, if you like other vegetables, sometimes I'll take the same dish. Oh, that looks great. Huh? That looks beautiful. Look at that. That looks that is applause applause. Just beautiful. Very simple. And I made this while we were talking. Mm -hmm. that quickly. I mean, that's why saute is such a wonderful option for cooking. Because Chicken, this you know, chicken's probably going to take the longest of anything to cook. And the thicker it is, like if you were using thighs, I love chicken thighs, and Lisa enjoys them now too because there's so much flavor. Same kind of method. It may not look as pretty because it's the dark meat, but you know it eats really, really well. But you'd serve this with some rice or some couscous or uh, you know risotto, anything you want to make, a little over even a little angel hair. Like that. That's exactly what I was thinking too. Putting it over pasta, it looks it looks so good. Now let me ask you this: Is there any? I mean, I'm thinking calories. I'm thinking, is there any kind of substitution for the butter? To, what, what you, you can take the butter out. You know, if, okay. if butter is a stumbling point for you and it's a deal breaker, oh. it'll be a little bit of a runnier sauce. It's not going to really taste that much different. It just won't have that appearance of a sauce. We need butter 
and you always use what you want to flavor it with, whatever fat. Like if I was using extra virgin, really good olive oil, I would put it in at the end. I've said this before. If I want the dish to have a little bit more of that richness from butter, it goes in at the end because that's when you're going to taste that last fat that I put in is at the end. Uh, but it's not a, like I said, it's not a deal breaker. And if you don't want to saute, say maybe you just want to make the sauce without the chicken. Yeah. And you might want to throw in some asparagus. You might want to throw in some. Soup. I don't guarantee it. There's so much you can do to it to, to add to the dish. And then you might want to grill your chicken breast. You know how pretty this would be with chicken breast with grill marks on it, top of the sauce. Yeah. That, that's good. A buffet. So you got people coming over and you grill 20 breasts and then you make a nice big batch of sauce, uh, even thickening it with cornstarch if you had to, to keep it thick. So now, that, what about, I, I could see that. Can, could you see that with uh, swordfish? Oh, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, that's what I thought. We're, we're talking, this is piccata, picante, any way you want to roll with it. All right. It's a lemon dish. Seafood. Veal, chicken, you know, shrimp, you know, uh, with swordfish, tuna, anything like that. And then, you know, you're kind of going to maybe poach it like we did last week a little bit in the pan if you want to, or grill it. So, I mean, I, I would either grill it and then top it with this wonderful sauce, leave it just just right at the hair of not being quite done, you know, so it's, it's not too dry if you're using fish. And then make a nice little batch of the sauce. And like I said, you know, although I don't like to thicken a lot of things with cornstarch, when you're making something that's going to sit on a buffet line or if you have to make a lot of the sauce, cornstarch is a really nice way to thicken. Yeah. Always put the cornstarch into a vessel, put the liquid in, stir it up really good with your finger, and then pour it into the liquid. Yeah, that's that's what I usually do. And I, yeah, and the flour freaks me out a lot of times because I'm so afraid of lumps. So I usually, you well, know. The gluten-free flour doesn't react quite like, at least the blend I'm using, like regular flour in terms of the lumps. But most of the time with regular flour, if I'm pushing it into the butter and the pan's hot and I'm putting it in and I'm stirring it around, you really don't have a lot of lumps. It really is. You know, I don't even really see any in this. And the, the, like I said, the gluten-free flour kind of reacts a little differently. Uh, but yeah, it came out well. So Beautiful. This, is, this is dinner. You know, open a bottle of wine while you're cooking this. You know, somebody's making a salad. And you have a really nice dinner in an easy amount of time. Like I said, play with it. This is the art of saute. This gives you, what do I have in my refrigerator? Maybe I'm not going to take it. Maybe I'm going to take it to another flavor, and I might want to incorporate some gorgonzola crumbles on top of it. You know, I wouldn't necessarily do that with lemon, but maybe I wanted to have more of a, a different kind of spice flavor. Maybe I want to cook it with some rosemary or throw some, like I said, some spinach in there and then just crumble a little gorgonzola cheese. Even if you don't melt it. So there's a lot of different ways you can you start. And maybe some lemon slices on top, too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Or some canned. Yeah, very nice. A lot Beautiful. of things. Very good. And, and that's it. So did we, uh, I assume we have some people watching. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, what do we have? Okay. Um, actually, Candy is asking uh, if there's a substitute for chicken breast and if chicken wings are okay. Candy, if you like wings, wings are fine. I mean, you could, uh, you can, like I said, grill them. You can bake them. You could cook your chicken any way you want to cook it. Just make the sauce if you want to. The beauty of this is that it's one pan. Uh, so, I mean, chicken wings will saute just as well. Uh, any part of the chicken you like. You can use turkey cutlets if you like. Uh, pork, like if you get a little pork loin, a tiny one, uh, pork medallions make a wonderful piccata. Yeah, so. And it almost, we used to, you know, people used to use that instead of veal because uh, it was still as white as veal was sometimes. So, you know, without the, the bad feeling of eating little baby cows. So. Good. Uh, and let's see. Aslan is loving it. She's just loving this dish. Uh, fabulously done, Chef. She's getting hungry. She's loving it. Yeah, I'm getting hungry, too. I see Michael Thomas is here. Thank you, Michael. And yeah, grill, you know, grill, and it looks pretty too. If you can get some good marks on that product, 
it really looks pretty. And uh, people will tend to go, wow, because this is kind of a flat dish. I mean, here I see a little more color because it's live. But when you look at it, it's kind of a gray dish. But when you get those marks in, it just really livens it up. And maybe even throw a little orange slice or blood orange slice. Or maybe you want to use a little, try a little different citrus. Maybe you want to make a blood orange ricotta instead. Mm. So you know, just experiment. Now you have that you know, ability to do that. And, and looks look for once in season, 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 too. season yeah. too. Yep. And that's that's our first show in the Art of Saute. And we'll, uh, we'll have more of those along yeah, the way. Yeah. I, I'm I, sure there's a million variations. Good, good ones. Absolutely. So uh, thank you all for coming. Susan, thank you so much for showing us all those great storage ideas. And we'll see you soon around our kitchen table. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.